Hey, it's Rob Castle from AZ Farms. It's the 5th of April, 2017, and we're about to do a garden update. All right, we'll start with the Swiss chard. Look at the color. You know something that colorful has to be good for you. Okra's coming up, look at those guys. They're looking nice. Garlic's looking real good. These guys have been in the ground for like four months already. Probably still got four months before I harvest them. Watermelons, I got two variety. I got black diamond. And I think the other one is crimson seedless. This might be a little close from what I'm used to and from what I like, but we're gonna go with it and we're gonna see how they do. Now wrapping around the watermelon area, I got a variety of summer squash. A couple of nasturtiums popping up. Look at this. That's a parsnip. We'll see what he does. Continuing on, more summer squash. Back here, we're gonna have peppers. Uh, I got a variety of peppers here. On the left, that's all gonna be hot peppers. On the right, I got your more mild peppers like your Anaheims, Poblanos, stuff like that. Tomatillos, I got about 12 feet of tomatillos. There's probably 15. Well, you know what? They're a foot apart, so there's 12 plants right there. 12 tomatillos. And look at that growth already. That guy's almost two feet tall. First time growing the pineapple tomatillo, and I noticed that they were very slow to start. These guys were seeded at the same time as the others, and you can see how far behind they are. Next to the tomatillos, we got vining beans. Uh, right here, we have Anasazi. Right next to the Anasazi, got Chinese long bean. So far, the beans are doing excellent. I got 10 feet of beans here, five foot of Anasazi, five feet of the Chinese long, and I got them six inches apart. Coming back this way, I got 10 feet of just your standard bush green bean. Interesting, we have a volunteer carrot. I didn't let any of my carrots go to seed, so it makes you wonder how he got there. So you got one, two, three bell peppers next to an eggplant, another bell pepper, Another bell pepper next to an eggplant. And of course kale. You know, kale I can grow pretty much all year long. I always have kale. Underneath the kale, I'm gonna be putting some sweet potato vines. I haven't tried growing sweet potatoes and kale together. I don't know if they're companion plants. I should look it up before I do it. But, you know, sometimes experimentation pays off. Sometimes, sometimes it don't. Got maybe five feet of cucumbers and they're planted six inches apart alternating on either side of the trellis um, if they do good that's plenty of cucumbers half half the row back there is pickling and the other half that's closer to me or closer to the camera is uh, market more all right walking back this way oh the prickly pear cactus longevity spinach behind that longevity spinach there's a lot of parsley, and that parsley is protected by the lantana. In front of the longevity spinach, I got a ton of nasturtiums. Uh, I like putting nasturtiums everywhere I can. I love the plant, I love the flowers, and it's edible. Now back here, dragon fruit, look at all the new growth coming off that dragon fruit. Elephant food right next to him, I'm not sure you can see it, let's see. Elephant food. Now wrapping back this way, I have an artichoke plant. Actually, I think I have three artichoke plants. Yeah, they come back every year. I wish I had room to grow a lot of artichokes, but I just don't. But these guys, I never have to water, I never have to care for them. And they give me plenty of artichokes. And let me see, I knew I saw one. Yeah, look at that. Already, delicious. More nasturtiums right next to the purple tree collards. In with the purple tree collards. I got some clover coming up, and behind the clover, I got some whorehound. Egyptian walking onions, they are just packed in there, and you, and you know what? That is how they like to grow. In front of the onions, I got some Hubbard. There's about four feet there, and I think I have three plants. I got an eight foot bed, just packed full of spaghetti squash. There's probably 10 plants in here. And what I'm doing is as they grow, I'm weaving them, as you can see with this guy right here. I'm just weaving them into the trellis. Just like that. And as he grows, I weave them back this way and back up and back up. And the goal here is to get them spaghetti squash weaved through the trellis 
and hopefully make the entire radius back down to the ground on the other side. The aloe vera, this is the orange blossomed aloe vera. I also have the yellow. Um, I cannot keep up with this thing. I never have. I probably never will. It's just always going nuts. If you, uh, if you grow aloe vera, all you need to do is start with one plant. And before you know it, you're gonna have hundreds. And the tomatoes, I got about 30 feet. I grow them vertically up stringers. I don't prune them very much. I do prune suckers. That's about it, or if I have a, if it's branching off into two main stems, and that other stem is going to be uh, detrimental to the plant, I'll prune that off. Oh, I got many varieties, yellow pear, purple pear, ivory pear, black cherry, wild cherry, crim, florinade, ace 55, and I'm sure I'm missing a few. Mixed in with the tomatoes, I got several carrots. Uh, I believe these are red core chardonnay. I don't expect them to produce me much of a root. What I want is the carrots to actually grow and become a ground cover. And with everything I grow here, I, I mulch heavily. I got straw, and on top of that straw, I got wood chips. And as these, as these guys grow taller, I'm gonna be adding more and more mulch. I wouldn't be surprised, and it's not uncommon for me to have a foot of mulch on my tomatoes by the time it hits June. And what do you know? There's our first tomato. The grapes are leafing out. The mulberry trees are leafing out real nice. And the herb bed, I got so many herbs packed in back here. Uh, the dandelions, they're bolting, they're going to be going to seed. One of my Swiss Chard are going to seed. This guy I'm not too interested in collecting seed on. But this guy, look at the trunk on him. This has been the most productive and healthiest and robust and largest Swiss Chard I've ever grown. It's from my own seed I collected last year. And when this guy goes to seed, I will be getting seed off him again. Next to the Swiss Chard, some plantain. Now, if, you if you've if you been following me on Facebook or you've been following the YouTube channel, you'll know right here, beginning from that Swiss Chard all the way to the dill in that celery was two borage plants. They grew to almost five feet tall and they, they came out of the bed almost five feet. That whole area was just borage. And the plants behind it suffered. Okinawa spinach. Now, people think, and I've heard this, I don't know how many times, people say you can't grow celery here in the desert. Well, yes you can. But let me tell you, the celery that you grow out of your own garden is gonna be packed full of flavor. There's actually a saltiness to it. And it is freaking delicious. My dill plants, their heads are just about ready to be collected. Curry, rosemary, an extra jalapeno pepper, a lot of mint. I've been cutting this back and dehydrating it. I got a roselle, I'm not sure where to put yet. Extra tomato, a couple extra jalapenos. I got about 15 grape cuttings I'm rooting out. Uh, these are a crimson seedless. Now, just because you have a leaf growth doesn't guarantee that you're going to have root development. So, these guys are looking good now. But, you know, time's gonna tell how well they rooted out. All right, in here I got a variety of clovers, wildflowers, velvet beans, malbar spinach, toothache plant, basil, and more clovers, more toothache plant, and a few more wildflowers down there. In this bed, I got clovers up front, loofah along the back, a few strawberries. This variety is called sequoia, and they are already starting to put on berries. And I thought I saw some color yesterday. Where did it go? Oh yeah, look at that. Right here I got glass gem corn. And next to the corn, I got a young pomegranate tree. Now the loquat I got wrapped in 90% shade fabric. It gets morning sun. This guy's had a rough go. When I first brought him home, I planted him. And at first the chickens left it alone. I thought, okay, I don't have to protect them, you know, from the chickens. A few more days go by, I come out here, and he was stripped. <laughs> Every leaf off that poor loquat was eaten by the chickens. So, I got him wrapped with chicken wire. Um, 
Lesson learned. Never trust your chickens around your plants unless you absolutely know they're not going to eat it. Over here I got more glass gem corn with two baby mango trees. The first one you see is uh, Kent and the second one is Repulsa. They're also getting afternoon shade with 90% shade fabric. And as that corn grows, I'm going to be putting more and more wood chips in it. By the time that corn is three or four feet tall, there's going to be wood chips to the very top of that box. And the idea here is to let the corn, the glass gem corn, grow up around the baby mango trees. And I think it's going to create a nice little microclimate, a cool, humid, shady microclimate for the baby mangoes. Now, I don't know if this is Don Olson approved, but I'm going to try it. And we're going to see what it does. Uh, baby mango trees, if you don't know, they need a little help in our climate uh, just to get through the first summer and maybe the second. Some people say you don't have to do anything to them. I'm a firm believer that they need a little help. So that's what I'm doing. We're gonna see if it works. Uh, obviously, if I think something's going wrong and the corn is either not providing enough of a, a, a beneficial microclimate or somehow harming the, the mango trees, the corn's coming out and shade fabric's going in. So we're gonna watch it, we're gonna experiment, and we're gonna learn. Yeah, the mini orchard's looking good. The trees are doing fine except for one. I got one plum back there who's having a real hard time. But everyone else, everyone else is looking great. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. All my social media is in a more detail box below. I'm, not, I'm also on Snapchat. So go to Snapchat and search AZ Farms or hit the link down below. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video.